The idea is that we bring together a community of open textbook collaborators and practitioners, and in these sessions, we talk informally about issues in open textbook publishing. So um, as a reminder, or if you haven't been to office hours before, these conversations are really community driven and are just one way that we can think together and work together on support and solutions. So please let us know if there are topics that you would like to explore in future sessions. So my name is Karen Lordson. I'm Managing Director with the Open Textbook Network. And today I'm going to introduce our session and our very special guest, Zoe Wake-Hyde. Um, first, just a little bit about the OTN. We're a community working to improve education through open education, and our members now represent more than 600 higher education institutions. And we build capacity through professional development and a community of practice. And we also are working to provide multiple pathways for publishing support. This includes partnerships with Pressbooks and with Rebus. And today we're really excited to be here as Zoe and Rebus team launch the Rebus projects. If you're on their mailing list, you may have received their um, announcement earlier today about going live. Um, we're excited uh, to provide a sneak preview of Rebus projects to the OTN members a few weeks ago. And um, Zoe and I are continuing to talk and think together on ways that we can partner and move open textbook publishing forward together. So in today's session, we're gonna learn more about the Rebus community's new collaborative model for open textbook publishing. Rebus Community Projects is a platform to enable global open textbook creators to collaborate on these projects. And uh, Zoe Wake-Hyde is a project manager with Rebus. She's gonna demonstrate the platform, which as I mentioned, is officially launching to it today. Woohoo! And um, she's, she's like our special in-house guest. <laughs> um, she's also going to talk about opportunities to get involved, um, including the selection of new projects for the platform during beta. And as always, we'll be sure to leave plenty of time for conversation, hear from all of you, um, and do Q&A. It's your choice if you prefer to do that in chat, or please feel free to unmute and go ahead and ask us questions. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Zoe so we can all see, um, see the new platform. Excellent. Thanks so much, Karen. I really appreciate that introduction. And this is a big, exciting day for us here at Rebus. Uh, and so this will be a bit of a different format to our usual office hours calls. I'll be doing most of the talking, but I do want to introduce our team who are here as well. Uh, and also just a note that we will be recording the session. Um, so just uh, for, for when you pose a questions uh, to, to know that. Um, so many of you will know uh, Liz and Aprova, who are our uh, representatives in these calls most weeks, uh, most months rather, um, and do a wonderful job, wonderful job of it. And we're also joined today by another key member of, uh, of the organization, our entire development team, whose name is Balder. Uh, <laughs> so Balder is our lead developer here at Rebus, and so obviously as we're launching the software, uh, he and I have been working really closely on this for many months, and so we wanted to have him here as well to see uh, the reaction from, from the people who will be using it and to put some faces to names and things, uh, so welcome to Balder as well, uh, and thank you, he's already fixed the first uh, major bug that we found uh, when we were setting up some projects earlier, so that's a, a good sign of things to come. Um, and so for the plan for today, I just want to run through a quick demo of the tool. Uh, we'll be running those over time, so you'll, uh, you'll see those as they come up. So I won't go into too much detail there, but I'll show you what it looks like, what it can do. Uh, and I also want to take the chance to talk about the direction of development in future, because I think it's really key to know that this is far from a finished product. Um, we're putting it out as our, our first release, and, and we'll only get better and bigger and brighter from there. Uh, and as well, uh, as Karen said, give you all a chance to ask some questions um, and, and uh, yeah, res respond to what you see and, and all of this will, uh, will be uh, ongoing in terms of having the conversation with, with all of you uh, about what you see the, this tool doing, how it can be better, what should we be thinking about that we maybe haven't so far. So this is the beginning of, of something um, rather than just a, just a limited time to talk about this. Um, so really the, the biggest thing to know about this tool is all of it has been informed by the work we've been doing with our pilot projects. 
So for the past 18 months or so, we've been hands-on with around 20 open textbook projects, all at different phases of the publishing process and really working to understand uh, what a project looks like, what it, uh, what it needs, and how we can go about opening it up to collaboration and really enabling that piece of it uh, as well. And so there's two, oops, sorry, it's always coming from someone who's just joined. If, if someone could mute who is not, please. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, where were they? So the, the, everything, the, the work that we did with those projects has informed this piece uh, and there are two big pieces of, of the Rebus community approach which is about tools and about resources to enable other people to do open textbook publishing at scale uh, and, um, and to be doing that collaboratively and that can be a really wide group, it can be a smaller group but we think that's a really key piece of, of uh, the success of, of open textbook publishing. Um, and so our first step for, for the tool was to get parity with what we have been using on the forum and some of you may have participated in projects on uh, the forum where we have been using that as a bit of a testing ground for uh, how to have a public listing for a project and how to use that for recruitment in particular. So we've used that as kind of our, our guiding influence and then we're putting it into a slightly new structure with more kind of developed features and starting to standardize what information is needed for a project. So that's really our first step was, was to meet uh, what we've been able to do so far with other tools and then from there we're going to be building in more custom solutions and I'll, I'll speak about those a little later in the call. So uh, without further ado I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll get going with the demo. Okay and I'll have to just hide the video so I can do what I need to. Right hopefully you can now see Welcome to Rebus Projects uh, and so this site is live you need to see that see it now. Uh, and of course, the, the, you can just look through the, the list in here, um, which I'll look at in a bit more detail in a moment. But you can also log in, and anyone who already has an account on the forum, you can immediately log in with the same details. Uh, so I'll just go through this now. There's only one major difference that you'll see as I go through this, um, uh, which is that I have, slight, oh, I have too many email accounts for a start. You'll see that, and then... <laughs> Once we get in, you'll see that the create new project button has popped up. This at the moment uh, is uh, only for certain people who have permissions and I'll talk about that a bit later. But otherwise you're seeing the same, uh, the same thing here once you're logged in. Um, and as well, when you first log in, you'll be prompted to create a profile and add some basic information and, and uh, opt in or out of emails, things like that. Okay, and then we have our listing. So right now this is all of our existing pilot projects uh, plus new two new ones that will be starting up soon so you'll hear more about these this is two translation projects here and then the rest of our pilot projects uh, all listed here with uh, with subject information and the team involved uh, that we're slowly building up as people sign in and also this column here is the latest activity uh, so whatever is happening that is most active on the project will be surfaced here at the top level which gives people a really easy in to see what's happening on the project and how they might be able to help. Okay, and then if we go into one of these, uh, let's look at introduction to philosophy. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, right, so here we have information about the book itself to start, uh, and we have the team building up here. So when you're in, uh, when you're in a project or, or looking to join a project, there will be a join button here with your information, so you always know your membership on a project. And then here we have the, the, the list of other contributors and the lead editing team as well. And then as we go down, uh, there are lots of documents associated uh, with the project. So they're all pulled here so you can find them as need be. There's a little bit of, as we're moving from forum over here, we're, we're trying to match up the, the structure, but I think probably in, in future we'll refine that a little further. So we don't necessarily need all of these documents. And then down the bottom here are the, the activities that are ongoing. So with introduction to philosophy, we're about to get into peer review, which is really exciting. We have three parts ready for peer review. Uh, and then we're still also recruiting part editors and authors for other parts of the project. So that's all uh, available for people to look at as well. And if we go into an activity, you can see uh, a bit more information about what's needed specifically, what the time commitment is. Here, maybe something like a review guide, which can be useful for people to know upfront. 
you can volunteer. I definitely don't know how to uh, peer review a, a philosophy book, but let me volunteer anyway. Here we go. And I could drop a note in here and say, hi, this is a demo. <laughs> Uh, ignore me. Um, here we go. So that will go onto oh, my controls are in the way. Sorry. And we can comment there. Okay. Um, and I think uh, I think that covers the basics of of a, a project and the activities associated with it. Uh, now I'll go in and show you what it looks like to create a new project. And I saw there are a few of you here who uh, who were already in uh, conversation with about this, so we'll we'll do this in more detail with you at another point. So I'll just do a quick overview here. So here we can drop in our project name. Uh, so this is the demo subject um, is. Let's call it OER, audience, everybody. Uh, and we could put in a target release date. Uh, right now, language and license are locked. Language in particular, we think in the very near future, we'll be uh, opening that up, particularly because we're starting to have projects that are uh, have a book language. So even if the project is, is being run in English there, the text is in uh, another language. Um, and we we want to gesture in that direction here, and that uh, is an area that we'll be working on further, um, that there's better and more support that we'll be able to give, not just for book and project language, but also for the interface. It's all set up for localization, and that will be happening in future. Uh, and really, that goes to this idea of uh, this being something that we want everybody to be able to use, very much so. Um, we have uh, projects based uh, all around the world. We have collaborators from all around the world and we want to make sure that they feel like this is a part of uh, this, that they are a part of this as well and that their needs are, needs are met. And um, so here you can drop in more information and start creating an outline. A bunch of chapters. Um, and then if we save this. Oh! <laughs> Live demos! Yay! <laughs> I promise that has been working and uh, immediately, oh, whoops, um, immediately Balder will be uh, <laughs> looking at that. Uh, in any case, I think that's actually as much as I, I can show of the interface right now. Uh, I think in particular, what we're really excited about is we have all the pieces in place. We've done a big UX overhaul from what some of you may have seen previously, if you were involved in the, in the beta earlier on, uh, to really make it start looking like a, a, a useful um, and interesting piece of software. Um, and uh, sorry, if you give me a second, I'll just check my notes to make sure I did cover everything <laughs> after that unexpected moment. Uh, yes, I think so. Um, Right, so there, with all the pieces of a project and an activity in place, the information about them, we can then start building new things and new ways to combine that information and, and really surface it as people need it uh, when they are actively managing a project. Uh, and so that's really one of the, the big next steps. Um, the first one is to create a, a dedicated uh, admin interface and uh, improve the editing. Uh, so that will kind of be unified. So there is a, when you're a project admin, you'll have a clear place to, to enter and edit information in a smart way. Um, and along with that, we, uh, we're looking at more granular controls of things like the order that things appear. So you could reorder your activities uh, and we'll uh, look at kind of ordering projects on the homepage as well, things like that. Uh, as well as being able to have public and private projects and activities, because we know that you're not necessarily ready to publish as soon as you start making your project that you want some time to work through it, particularly if you're working with other people. Uh, so that'll be one coming soon as well. And then in terms of combining the information that we now are capturing, uh, we want to move in this direction of uh, having dashboards. So something like an activities dashboard that has all the activities on a particular book and then some important information about them, uh, whether that's the, the number of people in the team involved in them, uh, whether it's uh, something like, um, the, the time, uh, the target completion date, things like that. So there's kind of an easy uh, overview for an administrator to look at their project and see what's been happening, what's left to do, how things are going at a high level without needing to go into each individual activity to check it. Uh, as well, we're also currently uh, looking, we have email notifications for a lot of the activity happening, but some of our feedback has also been that, um, that having in-interface uh, notifications will be really useful as well, which is, which is the next step on that piece of development. 
Um, so those, I think, are our, the, the focus for the next, uh, the next few weeks and probably a couple of months. As things are coming out, we're going to be working on uh, making sure that we uh, have good change logs. So when a release is coming, you'll kind of know what has changed and that you can go in and, and see what the new feature is. Uh, we're also really, really keen for feedback on all of that. And so we have, uh, we have our forum reconfigured, reconfigured a little bit to capture feedback from you. Um, and we're putting in as many paths for that as we can. Um, and really, I think looking out beyond the, the kind of immediate that we can you know, define features. Um, there are some big areas where we want to be looking as well. Uh, one of those is around task management. So the way I've started explaining this tool uh, to some people is that it's like a project management software like uh, Asana or Basecamp, except very specific for a certain use case rather than being generic enough for anyone to use it for anything. So that means task management is on our mind and having that really clear association of, okay, this person or these people are writing this chapter. Um, and, and so that's kind of that's a, an, another move towards making it useful for project administrators and not just kind of recruiting and gathering a team. Uh, and the other, the other piece is being able to build in the process. And we think that's a really exciting use for this. That uh, often what people are running into with publishing open textbooks is they don't necessarily know where to start um, and they don't have a process available to them. Uh, or, or, or um, they have part of a process for, for most of it and not for other pieces, or they have the process but they don't know uh, who else can be helping them with it. Um, and so we want to work on how we can build that in and make it really easy. So we're sort of teaching people along the way as well how to use this, uh, how to use the tool, but also how to think about publishing generally. Uh, and so one example of that is the idea of having activity templates. So that when you log in and you create your project, you can say, yes, I want uh, authoring. Yes, I want peer review. No, I don't need editing because I have an editor, that kind of thing. And then pre-populate some, some basic information for those activities that uh, offer you some more information about how to do them. And then also make them really clear that that's what you're intending to do with the project when it's publicized. Okay. Uh, and so then I think the other piece that, uh, that many of you will be wondering about is uh, actually using it and getting your project involved. Um, so as I pointed out that, uh, or as I mentioned, right now um, we are uh, offering access to a select number of projects. That is mainly because we need to be sure that we can support them properly, uh, that we can gather and manage the feedback that is coming from them. And so it's kind of a, a question of our capacity right now. And also we think this will be, uh, over time, it will get more useful for people who aren't in close contact with us. And right now, we know that we kind of need that a little bit of uh, a little bit of light touch to help people out with it, uh, that we can't do quite at the scale we would like to. Um, so that will be uh, the the number of projects in there will be increasing over time. Right now, we have about ten new beta projects that we're really excited to bring on board. We'll be announcing those within the next couple of weeks, and um, so we're in conversation with uh, with the leads on those projects. Um, and then we also have the uh, application form, which was linked to from the announcement and a few other places, and I'm sure we can drop it in here as well. So anyone who does want to be considered for another spot when it opens up, uh, please, please uh, send us your information about your project. Um, and as I say, as we can, we'll be bringing more people on. Uh, and yeah, really excited to see where this goes. So I think that was uh, my slightly shorter spiel uh, <laughs> given, given the uh, big orange error message, uh, but I can see Valda working on it as we speak. Uh, so I might pause there. I see a lot of, uh, a lot of activity in the chat. Um, and so maybe we'll jump into some questions there. Uh, oh, your enthusiasm. Oh, how about this? I haven't deployed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Valda has already fixed the bug, but not deployed it. There we go. <laughs> Uh, right, so Aprova, actually, you've had a closer eye on the chat. Yeah. Can you uh, maybe highlight a couple of um, points we can pick up on? Just something about licensing policy. So some people are yes. wondering um, whether we'd be willing to amend our CC by uh, mm -hmm. licensing policy. And if you want to execute a such question from Heather. Okay. From Heather Ross. So Hi, Heather. Use the sketch one. Um, just give me a moment. So she says, what if a project um, is a major revision or a translation of an original that mm -hmm. carries um, a CC BY and CSA license, for example? So right. What would happen in this case? Uh, so we, 
so uh, generally speaking, we have a policy that books using uh, the that created with support from the Rebus community should be CC by. Uh, that is in part because we advocate strongly for it. We also uh, that is um, uh, coming from our our funder as well from the Hewlett Foundation. Uh, I think over time our approach to that is evolving. Uh, we have found. Uh, interesting cases and interesting ways to work within that. Uh, certainly there is content within some of our books that are what we call globally CC BY. They may have a chapter or two that are uh, that carry a different license. Um, and we're also starting to think about what the actual needs are of people making these books and that there are cases where there are very, very good arguments to not be using CC BY. Uh, in terms of adapting an existing book. I'd be interested to, to hear more about it, uh, whether it's being expanded on at all and whether, say, the new content, uh, how that would be licensed. And we do have a case as well where we're working with a text that the core text uh, isn't CC BY, but the ancillary materials that are being developed for it, which is the piece we're involved in, are. Uh, so there's, there's flexibi flexibility within it, and we're, I think, very happy to be talking about those things uh, with projects as they come on board. And it's uh, it's indicated in the application form, you have the chance to say whether it will be CC BY or not, and if not, to explain it, uh, and then we'll, we'll speak uh, with the project in, in question. And over time, like we'll, we will probably be reviewing where we stand on that and making sure that there's a bit more clarity broadly rather than just doing case by case basis. But I think we want more information about how people are actually thinking about licenses and using them. And Zoe, to clarify, it sounds like you have the 10 beta projects that you'll be working with in the immediate future. Is that right? It is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I expect uh, hopefully next week or the week after we'll be announcing those. Excellent. Um, so we still have more um, questions in the chat that have provided mm -hmm. I think has um, managed to address all of them. Um, but <laughs> please let me know if that's not the case. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about um, finding collaborators, organizing them, um, having the central communication in Rebus projects, mm -hmm. and just kind of thinking through together, all of us on the call, how we imagine um, using the tool. I know when I was in there during beta experimenting, um, it was just such a value in sort of having all the things you typically keep in your head or scattered around your desk in one place. Um, so there are many people on this call who have um, published open textbooks and I would love to hear from them in terms of how they could imagine um, leveraging the tool if someone would like to, to chime in um, or things that they're thinking about um, that they would like to see in the future. Um, to Jonathan's question about whether this is um, a project management tool, um, which Zoe already addressed, yes. Um, I would like to add on to that and say um, that it can um, support, you know, many different publishing sort of uh, productions. Um, mm -hmm. So whether that's in Pressbooks or another publishing tool, um, for example, the OTN has a publishing cooperative, we can imagine sort of using um, those systems together. So I think there's a lot of flexibility um, in Rebus projects that um, is really exciting. Are there other questions or people who would like to sort of think out loud about how they can imagine um, using Rebus projects? I see more chat in the more so chat in the chat. There are definitely some questions going around mm -hmm. regards to the forum and how the forum will function now that um, Rebus projects is live. So maybe right. you speak to that, Zoe. Definitely. Uh, so the forum with the projects that are in there, some have had a whole lot of really amazing activity, others less so for uh, many different reasons. What we have tried to do as we've set up the, the existing projects uh, in the new tool is to make sure that there's a link back to the forum so that that information is captured. Um, we've also posted there to encourage people to move over to uh, the new tool. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to lose anything there so that everything that's in the forum is not going anywhere. Um, uh, and we're starting to kind of refactor and rethink about the forum as actually a community space where uh, things outside of specific projects can be discussed. So to start it is our, our uh, first point of contact for support. So what we really want to do is, is be fostering uh, 
questions and answers there so they not only uh, help others who are visiting it later um, but also invite others in the community to be answering them when they go beyond particularly when they go beyond say how to how do I set up my project um, we think that can be a really valuable resource and in particular because the the project work that we've been doing I think in every case there has been a big role of just playing a sounding board for, for project teams uh, that often what they need is to voice something, something they're grappling with, a question that they have, not necessarily to get a specific answer for us, but to talk it through. And so that's the kind of space that we, we see the, the forum being and that's the role we see it can play in, uh, in the project's ongoing, um, even while the actual project activity is happening more on the on the Rebus projects tool. Uh, so anything that is there currently, um, we do want to keep it. There's, there's huge value in some of the conversations that have happened there. Uh, we do think it's a, it's a hard thing because they're not exactly the same as much as we've looked for parity, um, that there are differences between them. So it's not, they're, they're, we couldn't find any very, very smooth transition over. Uh, however, we think we've managed to, to do what we can. Um, and there's also a, a piece there of, of self-determination for the project. So if someone decides that they really just want to be using the forum still, then we, we have no problem with that. Um, and, and new projects going forward, I think will find their, their home and kind of settle into the, to the new tool. Hopefully that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Jeremy did have one um, more little related question about participants. Um, will participants need to sign up again? Uh, no, you can log in with the same account to the new tool. You will go through the create profile because we're working towards a more centralized uh, uh, user kind of that you will have one user profile rather than two with the forum as well. So that's a step in that direction. But definitely same account that you've had um, will take you straight in there. Thanks. And Dave has a question adding on to a comment that Tim mentioned in the chat around mm -hmm. student collaboration and how uh, this could be leveraged for student collaboration. So Dave's question is, is the functionality of the tool wiki-like in that it could retain multiple versions of content? Could we include contributions and edit out others? Um, so I think uh, around content in particular, the content itself of a text doesn't live in the project. Different versions of say the activities. Right now I would just suggest creating another copy of it. We haven't built anything specifically to support that, but that is a really interesting piece. Uh, we have had a couple of uh, projects where say uh, three or four different instructors have been working on an assignment with students and then are contributing the materials back so we could see a case for them having some kind of link uh, within the umbrella of say an anthology uh, which is where a lot of this work has happened with a couple of the anthologies we work with. Uh, so we, uh, we, we love student collaboration we very much see that as being built into this as well you know we think it's really powerful and exciting uh, specific features speaking to that right now I wouldn't say that we have them um, but very interesting to be thinking in, in that direction as well. Thank you all for your questions and clarifications that's why we're here so uh, keep them coming. Okay thank you Jonathan. Uh, uh, this is a new one in the chat I'll just go ahead and read it for everyone. So is it correct that the basic use case is a teacher or organization realizes it has a need for a particular open textbook which does not yet exist. The job seems too big for them just to author it themselves, so they announce the project with the Rebus Project tool and seek collaborators from around the world. The tool helps organize a mid-sized group of authors and also peer reviewers, etc. Great OER results. Definitely. So that is it is one of the very central use cases that we see this tool supporting. Um, I would add to it and say it may be that uh, it's a small team who've already gone most of the way with a book in terms of creating the content and they decide that where they would like input is for peer review or something like that. So it's not necessarily just from the very beginning of a project. We think there, there are stages all along the way uh, where this, this could be interesting and valuable to people. Um, and as well in terms of organizing the group of authors, really we, we range from single author right through to how many would we have on philosophy dozens. Um, so we're, we're really trying to keep that possibility open as well uh, of, of having the team be as big or as small as you want it to be. Um, 
collaboration is a is a catch-all term in some ways but it can go from you know i'm collaborating with someone at my own institution <laughs> right through to uh, know we have every continent and every time zone represented and we're we're managing a really large group uh, working on a project and to just um, add a different use case, um, Aperva moved over the open authoring guide, which we created in uh, the Rebus community. And so um, I can imagine, you know, now offering a remix and adaptation going forward. And so it doesn't have to be a brand new project. It can be the continual evolution of, a, of an existing one to encourage remixing. Absolutely. Um, Amy has a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I would just add, uh, Karen, you mentioned before as well that it, it can kind of act as a hub for the for all the different pieces of the project. And I think when you're thinking about OER long-term, that's really, really vital. That once a book is published, that there is still something other than the content itself that can serve as the place to think about revisions, releasing a new edition, how do we gather feedback uh, long-term, whether you know, uh, someone is moving on into another field or another job and they don't have capacity for it, how can we keep that alive and really keep that community piece going long term uh, that that's really critical and, and that I think we we haven't had any of our own books go that far yet uh, in many ways we're getting there really we are we're, we're starting to look at, at second editions of some of what we've released so we're starting to get into thinking about that as well uh, but certainly the, the long term plan is, is for that kind of activity to happen in this, this as I say kind of home or hub for a project as well. Mm -hmm. um, Amy do you want to come on? Oh yeah, thanks. Um, well, I feel like I'm being dense and I also have to admit that I might understand this better if I read all the starred emails from Zoe in my inbox. And so you might be repeating yourself. I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> no, no worries. Thinking of, thank you. So thinking about the like organizational use case, I thought Jonathan's question was very helpful and clarifying. Thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm reading grant proposals right now, which means that I'm going to have a pipeline of new um, remixes and authoring projects, um, but it's going to be a whole bunch, like, right. you know, up to 100% of the total number of projects in Rebus right now. And since you're in beta and you just decided, okay, this is who we're going to work with, obviously, like, this isn't the right time to flood you with requests, but are you thinking in the future that my project management could live in this software as an organization? Very much so, very much so. Okay. So with each of the individual projects we've been working on, they haven't really been connected, but our role, and so that's been largely me and Aperva who've been working on these, We've been in a very similar position to what you are of having many projects uh, on the go at a, at, at a time. And so we've also been doing that kind of meta thinking of not just how does one project run, but how does uh, a project management process for someone managing lots of projects run. Uh, and so when I spoke about dashboards, I think the, there are a couple of really clear needs at the project level for dashboards. We could also absolutely see one for I'm a project admin on 10 different projects and I need to surface certain information about them at that and have them available right away uh, to keep track of the progress. And as well, I think they're, they're well, there are still kind of lots of <laughs> lots of unknowns uh, about like, say, we want to keep all of this connected. We want to make sure that projects are speaking to each other, that the people are finding all the projects in one place uh, and not kind of siloing too much. We do also really see the value for an institution and in being able to use this as a, as a core part of, of their open textbook publishing program. Um, what that looks like exactly, I, I don't think we're totally there yet, but it is very much on the mind. I often use the, the term of what we're building towards is like an open textbook program in a box. Um, so if someone was starting, starting from scratch or starting something new that they could use it. At the same time, we also really want to be talking to people exactly like you, Amy, who are already doing this work and thinking about what you need and what could make it, uh, what could make it better for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And so um, I will definitely keep my eyes peeled for <laughs> coming down the line. And then a follow-up question. Yes. Um, it seems like, or maybe this is sort of the nature of Rebus being in startup mode, but it does seem like the projects are really about creation. And what I'm finding is that I have a lot of projects that are entering a really awkward maintenance phase where right. I'm not at a level of capacity where I can't feel like I'm doing a good enough job of that. And that's something that 
I could definitely use this type of tool or community support with. Is that something that you're thinking about? Absolutely, absolutely. As I said, I think we're approaching that point ourselves as well with the projects we've been very closely hands on with. Uh, and I think I think that is a really big kind of question problem in the, in the wider OER community of how to uh, keep books alive, how to capture people who are using them and, and doing work with them, including say creating ancillary materials. How do we connect that back? How do we do this, this long term maintenance? Uh, I wouldn't say we we certainly don't have all the answers, um, but we're thinking about it. And uh, again, it's about finding people who are doing that work uh, and, and who, who are about to be, who are willing to work with us to create these processes, then build them in and make them available for others who are going to encounter this problem again. Um, so, so definitely, uh, definitely on the mind. And Amy, are your grantees still able to choose the output of their OER? It was a yes from her in the chat, I think. Oh, okay, thanks. So um, I just think that's another sort of great um, reminder that it, it, how people are writing or producing their work um, can be in any variety of formats. It's not happening in Reap's projects. That's more of the place to um, gather all of the different people and materials and the, the hub idea that we've been talking about. So Zoe, there are a few more um, great questions here for you. Uh, I think the first one, um, so I don't miss any, is from Dave. Mm -hmm. um, just, I need to scroll. Um, here we go. Will Rebus continue to host texts that are developed or do you foresee us needing to move to a different hosting platform after development is complete? No, we're, uh, we're with you as long as we can be. Um, there's certainly no, no expectation that you would move on to a different uh, hosting arrangement. So we also have the Rebus Press, which is a Pressbooks instance that's available to any of the projects using the tool. That said, there are, uh, we're not totally locked into that, that if people have, um, have other platforms that they want to be using and or other Pressbooks platforms as well. Uh, that we're, we're kind of, we're happy for people to do what they want to. We do, and I believe this is part of our criteria for the beta projects, and we'll sort of expand on this in, in a little more clarity once we're um, a bit further along, but we really, really strongly encourage the idea of having editable formats available and having it accessible somewhere on the web, uh, because we think that uh, the, a lot of the power of open is when these things are available, not just where you have the legal right to remix it or edit it or do whatever you wish with it, but also the technical uh, ability to. So that's really important to us. Uh, but again, that said, that can take different forms. We have a tool available if people need it. And our commitment is very much that if you're using that, uh, that piece that, that uh, we're with you for the, for the long haul. And Dave added that regarding maintenance, he has a requirement that each student contribute some improvement to the content each week, which is why he was interested in the wiki capability. Right. Um, some right. student contributions are extremely valuable and others not as much. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think there, there's a distinction that Karen was getting at uh, just before is that the projects tool is for the project management. The content doesn't live there. Content is developed elsewhere and then put into another tool like Pressbooks to be made available. Uh, in terms of that kind of uh, ability, um, sorry, let me just read through this again, uh, to be able to contribute and then, so for example, in Pressbooks, you could have students uh, creating their chapters in there and then you pick which ones get made public or not. I'm not sure how that could be handled. There are ways of doing that. Or you could run your own uh, submission process and then select which would be put into the, the book itself and, and made public. Uh, so I think there are a few different ways to do that. It's a little outside what Rebus Projects is trying to do, um, but certainly the two go hand in hand. And then Jonathan had a question a little bit further up the chat. Is the tool Floss? What if someone wanted to spin up their own server with their own instance? Would that be doable? Right. Uh, right now, I think we're, we're a little early on in that. Um, Hugh's on the call. He might want to, to chat about this a bit more. We've been talking about it, uh, having that conversation, because we know it's a really critical one in OER. And have I just lost? No, Hugh, uh, can you jump on? Where is he? I see a 514. Yeah. That should be Hugh. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the, the short version is uh, in terms of actually executing, do we have it available for, for uh, as, as an open source product? Uh, no, uh, so Amy, um, I don't actually know what the full acronym stands for, but this is 
free so the, Libra open source software. There we go. Free Libra open source software. Um, we, uh, we absolutely understand the importance of it. And uh, while we haven't, I guess we haven't internally said the absolute word, yes, we will. However, we don't see a way that it wouldn't be. Um, we know it's critically important that people should be able to get their data in and out of it. Uh, so we are 100% in favor of open source, how that actually is executed. We're not quite there yet. Oh, is that Hugh jumping in? Uh, I hope yes, I <laughs> finally. Can you guys hear me? We can, yes. Yeah, um, I apologize earlier for the loud restaurant banging sounds that interrupted the call. <laughs> which was me. Um, so uh, just in answer to that question, we absolutely are planning to be open source. The, we want to do this cautiously to a certain degree. We want to make sure that the model is in place so that what we're doing can be um, financially sustainable in the long run. It's great to have funding from Hewlett, but uh, you have to keep going back and say, please, please give us more money. Um, and so we are looking at a model similar to um, Pressbooks and other open source uh, software models where uh, institutions um, would pay to support a hosted and, and maintained and supported version. Um, there may be free software as well that would be available. Um, and however, I think the value of the network and the system, it can be valuable for an in individual institution. It's much more powerful when um, there's communication across different systems. And so that's a piece that I think we would see as critical before releasing um, open source software. So uh, it is in the plans. The, uh, when that would happen is uh, it's very early days yet. and. Uh, we do want to make sure that we have the model in place to have it make sense for us so that we can be sure that we've got a future ahead to keep working on this and making it better and, and supporting it properly. So hope hope that addressed that question. Thanks, you. Okay. Um, Zoe, there's another question here from Heather. She says that we're in the process of moving toward our Pressbooks installation being hosted by you. Have you considered a way for people at a particular institution that has books hosted by Pressbooks also show the projects and the works connected to the institution on their Pressbooks site, even a prominent link on the page? So I think showing the the bridge. Right. Uh, thought about it, definitely. Uh, we think there are some really cool ways that the two uh, two pieces could speak to each other. Um, I think uh, just for uh, for anyone who doesn't know that uh, several of the Rebus team have shared their time. We've been part-time Rebus and part-time on Pressbooks. We're moving away from that now, moving to be more, uh, so Perva and I will be full-time on Rebus. There'll be more about that, but I do just want to say, so when, when they say you, I'll put my Pressbooks hat on. <laughs> uh, so yes, we think that the, the two go together really well. Uh, the power of the, the book homepage and a project homepage, I think speaking to each other is really exciting. So you can, uh, whichever one you come across first, you'll see that there is a, a kind of the, the life in the community and, and everything happening around uh, the, the book project hybrid. <laughs> um, and so I think one of the very first things we'll do is we already have books that have been released. So what we want to be able to do is have a field where you can drop the link into it in Rebus projects. And there'll be a big bright box at the top of your project saying first edition has been released go look at it over here and probably a big button saying adopt me or, or uh, I have adopted this and so to kind of get that feedback mechanism going as well um, there and then on the uh, on the press book side as well similarly uh, some kind of widget saying this book is currently you know working towards its second edition would you like to contribute go over here or are you using this book in your classroom and you've developed ancillary materials here where you, you can submit them so uh, it's very very exciting uh, the, the way the two can work together um, I think we need to get a little further along with previous projects um, uh, to really make that, that worthwhile um, but certainly on the on the roadmap Thank you, Zoe. So we are rounding the corner on our hour here, and there have been a few things um, that you may have been saving sort of at, for, for the end of our conversation. Uh, for example, you just mentioned 
um, everyone moving to like either all Rebus or all Pressbooks. Um, I don't know if you want to talk more about that. Um, but any other sort of um, looking into the immediate future comments um, so that we're sure to let people know next steps before we adjourn today. Absolutely. Uh, so we, I guess we can make this a bit of a, uh, I'll put Liz on the spot and say that one of the parts of this, uh, this moving between the two organizations is that Liz will be moving or has moved full time over to Rebus. Um, so she has been absolutely wonderful and incredible as, as a part of the Rebus team and we wouldn't be where we are without her. So we're very, very sorry to lose her, but she is going on to do fantastic work. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, Aprova and I are moving full time to Rebus. So uh, Aprova is officially taking on the title of product, pro sorry, project manager. <laughs> and I'm now more in the product manager uh, capacity at Rebus Community. Um, and we'll, we'll put out more information about that in, in the near future. Um, but I do want to take the chance to say thank you, particularly in this format, because I think these office hours calls have been a, an, a really amazing contribution from, from Liz and the work she puts into them. Uh, obviously, in, in um, in combination with OTN, uh, I think she's been our representative in this piece um, for, for uh, pretty much the entire time. So thank you to Liz. Thanks, Zoe. Um, and then I would say as well, uh, we are really, really excited to hear what you think of this tool. Uh, it is now, the site is live. You can go log in, poke at it, break it like I did. Uh, it's okay, we'll fix it quickly. It's already, <laughs> it's already fixed. Uh, and so I think we'll drop, I'll get a prover to drop a link into um, the forum that we've set up. Uh, to uh, to kind of get that conversation going about both things that are broken and also what you see that could be valuable with this in the future. Um, everything we want to do is is everything we do we do it for you, uh, <laughs> and so that that kind of user feedback is is absolutely vital uh, and and we love hearing from you. Um, so I think that's kind of the the big broad next step. Uh, then in terms of projects, if you have one, if you know someone who has one, if you think maybe you could convince someone in your institution who wants to be involved, uh, we also have the application form there. And as I say, as we can, we'll be bringing on more projects. Um, we're really keen to see more people using this, both to get the feedback and also just because we love making books and we love it when you guys make books uh, and all sorts of other kinds of uh, materials that can come out of this. Uh, so I think that's kind of the... The next steps for us. This is in some ways a big milestone for us and a completion, but it's also the beginning of something else uh, extremely exciting. Um, and in particular, I want to say thank you to everybody who has worked on our projects to date, on our various working groups, all sorts. Um, everybody has just been so wonderful in embracing what we do and our approach uh, to, to this as well, um, of working it out with you. Uh, and um, yeah, so thank you. You're all as much a part of this as we are internally. It's uh, been appropriately a very collaborative effort. <laughs> An exciting time. And I know we're all um, looking forward to seeing how things continue to develop. So thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Liz. We've worked closely together on office hours and um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, Sounds like we're saying farewell in a way that we're not really saying farewell. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. Um, I also wanted to say, um, as I mentioned earlier, that um, OTN is always talking with both Pressbooks and Rebus, thinking together on ways that we can support your work publishing open textbooks. Um, when we were providing the early um, sneak preview into the Rebus Projects beta. We mentioned um, the opportunity to act as a facilitator in that space. If you volunteered, if that continues to be of interest, please um, get in touch with me and we can continue to think about how that may look or could work. Um, and we're gonna keep thinking about um, other um, potential partnerships. And if things are percolating in your brain, please bring them forward to us, um, you're the ones um, you know, hard at work on these projects. So it really helps hearing from you in terms of what you need um, to help us think about what we can do. So I'm just going to add my email in the chat just in case. Um, any, any other uh, pressing, burning questions or comments before we end today's session? Okay, 
And uh, as I mentioned, future office hour topics, if you would like to go ahead and add your ideas, we have a form for that um, and we love hearing from you. So we're getting uh, thanks in the chat and thanks to all of you. Uh, it's one of the things I know we all enjoy in the open community is uh, sharing, our, sharing our thanks and gratitude with one another. So we appreciate your time today. We'll make the video uh, available shortly. All of the office hour videos are on YouTube at this link and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Zoe. We're super excited about this. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for being here.